This is going to be 1-2. We're going to continue on with our calculus review, but this time we're going to take a look at solutions to polynomials. And so today you guys are going to be able to find the solutions of polynomials, which we've defined previously that a polynomial is a special type of function. Right? In pre-calculus we went over, spent an entire unit on polynomials, and we know polynomials to be a special type of function. Now this lesson isn't going to be very long, just two examples and it's just going to be a refresher or a reminder and what I'm going to do is in the video itself I'm going to link other videos that associate with finding the solutions to polynomials. So it says determine the roots of f of x equals 9x cubed minus 18x squared plus 6x. Now the nice thing about this is this one's probably it's not as complicated as going to be the next example but when it uses the phrase the roots that means basically we're trying to find the solutions well the solutions of what well typically it's always f of x equals zero meaning I set this equal to zero and I need to find the values for x that make it equal to zero. Now why is it? Why do I need to find that when it equals zero? Well, we want to know where it crosses the x-axis. That's kind of like the practice. We want to find where it crosses the x-axis. Well, in this instance, my y is zero. That's the x-axis. So when we're trying to find the solutions to a polynomial, we should always check to see if we can factor it first. And so in this instance, when we were trying to factor, we look, hey, is there a GCF? Is there something in common? And in this instance, there is. There's going to be a 3 in common with 9, 18, and 6, and there's going to be an x in common. And so that's going to give me 3x squared minus 6x plus 2. Then from here, this is where I can go through and say, well, uh, does it follow that typical quadratic trinomial pattern and it does it's quadratic and it's a trinomial and so we multiply a times c together which is going to give me six and so I need to see how does a times c does that add up to b does a times c six how, do, how can I factor this two and three uh, one and six do any of those give me an, a negative 6? The answer is no, so I, I can't factor that further. So this means I'm going to now have to use the quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, we get negative b, so 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And so I get 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 and it looks like 12 minus 24 all over 6 which is 6 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 6 6 plus or minus the root 12 that breaks into 4 and 3 so that's going to be 2 root 3 and there's a 2 in common that can factor out so 2 3 plus or minus root 3 all over we'll say 2 times 3 and so my roots there I get 3 plus or minus root 3 all over 3 so I have those roots there that corresponded to this part right here what about this this 3x well I can take that I can set that equal to 0 and solve and so I get x equals 0 and so my roots are going to be 0 3 plus root 3 over 3 and 3 minus root 3 over 3 So those are going to be my roots. Now if you wanted to write these combined together, that's okay. Now our next one here, finding the solutions to this one, well, we'll look for a GCF. Was there something in common? Well, there's nothing common between 3, 11, 10, and 4, except 1, but that doesn't help us. And there's no x in common. There's no variable in common. So this is where we do the p's over q's. Now I'm hoping that like it instantly rings a bell and you guys are like, oh yeah, p's over q's. I remember how to do that. Right. So in this instance here, my p's are your factors of this number. So my possible p's are going to be 1, 2, and 4. And your q's are the factors of that number, which are going to be 1 and 3. 
And so we have all the possible combinations. 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 4 over 1, and then 1 over 3, 2 over 3, and 4 over 3. So now I need to go through and I need to test these using synthetic division. So 1, I put the 3, negative 11. I don't have an x squared, so I need to put a placeholder there. 10 and negative 4. So we go through and we just have to try these out. Maybe they work, maybe they don't. Hopefully it, magic will happen. Okay, that doesn't work. So let's try negative one. Okay, it doesn't look like, well, maybe. Negative 14, negative four. Oh, it did work. Yay. All right. So we know that negative one worked. This is my reduced polynomial right here. This is my constant x, x squared, x cubed. So now I need to try and see, does that break down further? Well, let's try negative one still. Three, negative 14, 14, and negative four. Because we don't know, there, there could be multiplicity. So bringing down the three, multiply, add, multiply, Okay, that doesn't look like it's going to work. Okay, so there's no more negative ones. So now let's try positive 2. Three, multiply. This will give me, what is that, negative 8, negative 16, negative 2. Oh. I feel like that was like so close. Let's try negative two. <laughs> yeah, this looks like it doesn't work. That's just gonna get larger and larger and larger. Uh, we have plus or minus four, so let's try four. And once again, I'm using my reduced polynomial. Bring down the three, multiply, add, multiply. Negative two is negative eight, gives me six. That's not gonna work. Okay, so, so far that's not gonna work. Now, looking at this first number here, that's a three. So I need to multiply anything that divides by 3. Well, all of them do that. So let's try 1 third. Let's see. Actually, let's do it this way. We know that when I did 1, I got a negative 2. When I did 2, it looked like it got a bigger number. So when I did 2, it went negative 8. So if we kind of like imagine the graph, at 1, it was negative 2. At 2, it was negative 8. So it was all the way further here. So maybe it crosses somewhere along there. So maybe let's try positive 1 third. Let's try that. So if I do positive 1 third with 3, negative 14, 14, and negative 4, bring down the 3. Now multiply, that's going to give me 1. Add those together, I get negative 13. So multiplying those, I get negative 13 thirds. That doesn't look like it's going to work out nicely. Let's try negative 1 third. So bring down the 3, multiply, add, I get negative 15. Now if I multiply those together, I get 5. Okay, so it looks like this is not going to work either because I get those weird numbers. So I'm going to erase some of this so we can have extra room. So far, we've tried 
the ones, the twos. We tried positive four, don't think it's gonna be negative four, so we can skip that for now. We tried the one thirds. So I'm gonna erase this to give us more room. Okay, so let's try two thirds. So three, negative 14, 14, and negative four. Bring down the three, multiply those together, I get two. Add, I get negative 12. Multiply together, that's gonna give me negative 24 over three, which is going to be negative eight, which gives me six. Multiply those together, I'm gonna to get 12 over three, which is four. There it is, so that does work. So positive two thirds work. Now I have x squared, that's gonna be x, and that's gonna be my constant. So, so far, I have my solutions of negative one and two thirds. So now with this three x squared minus 12 x plus six, let's see if I can factor that further and find the solutions. So there's a three in common, So this here doesn't factor. So because it doesn't factor, we're gonna to have to use the quadratic formula. And so using the quadratic formula, remember that's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac. So get b squared, or negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c. And that's all over two times a. And so 144 minus 4 times 3 times 6. So I'll enter that in the calculator. That gives me 72. That's all over 6. Well, 72 is 36 and 2, so that'll be 6 root 2. So 12 plus or minus 6 root 2, all over 6. There's a 6 in common, so 2 plus or minus root 2. So those are going to be my solutions. My solutions are going to be negative 1, 2 thirds, 2 plus root 2, and 2 minus root 2. And those are going to be the solutions to my polynomial here. Now this one was a little bit longer. This one was a little bit more difficult. We had to use the rational roots theorem, which is the p's over q's, to find the initial values. And then once we broke down our polynomial, we were able to use uh, into a quadratic equation. We were able to use our ways to solve quadratic equations, which happens to be using the quadratic formula. So in conclusion, what was reviewed today? Well, we looked how to solve polynomials. Um, we didn't review m very much of the factoring method, but we were able to use the quadratic formula to help us. And I want to hear from you what other concepts were retrieved from precalculus to help us with those problems. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.